Hi, I'm Larry, N8LP. Welcome to the LP500 introductory video. We will examine the three main modes of the LP500 and look at a few of the many useful features of this instrument. The first mode is Power SWR. In this mode, we see large numerical readouts for peak power and SWR along the top, along with bar graphs for average and peak power and SWR. The small indicator just below the power readout shows the current selected coupler. The bar graphs have slide rule legends, which correlate with the three user selected power ranges. There is also a fixed SWR legend. The power range can be manually selected or auto ranging. In auto range mode, the legends automatically change to indicate the current range. As I transmit, you can see the legend change from the current low range of 10 watts to the medium range of 100 watts. If I turn on the amplifier, it now jumps to 1000 watts, which is the current high setting. In addition, you'll note that the coupler channel changes to channel 2. It is not normally necessary to use a separate coupler for low and high power. But in this case, I have the channel 1 coupler connected between the rig and the amplifier, and the channel 2 coupler connected after the amplifier. This allows me to check amplifier linearity with a trapezoidal display, which I'll show in the next section of this video. You'll also notice how rapidly the bar graphs update. The screen refreshes at a rate of more than 50 times per second. The bar graphs are also very smooth, allowing the user to adjust an amplifier in real time with either a carrier or a string of dits to reduce average power dissipation. Besides the mode, channel, and range buttons, there are buttons to select power and or SWR alarms, average bar graph setting, and set up calibrate screens. Now let's look at the waveform monitor screen. This works like an oscilloscope, and displays sample transmit voltage versus time. There are voltage scales from 25 volts per division to 200, and time scales from 1 millisecond per division to 25 milliseconds per division. Each of these scales is labeled with the mode most associated with this sweep rate, and each is adjustable with the optical encoder knob. The resulting sweep value is saved with that sweep setting and the actual sweep value is displayed in the right hand legend. Also shown in the legend are the voltage range and transmitter peak power readings. In the top right are the touch screen cursor controls. The voltage and time values at the cursor position are shown. When both cursors are displayed, the displayed time is the difference between the two cursors. To make it easier to set the cursors, there is a freeze-unfreeze button. Let's take a look at a CW keying waveform. Freeze it and measure the rise time of the leading edge. In this case, I'll use my finger, but the user can also use a small stylus for more pinpoint accuracy. As we can see, the keying envelope from IK3 is very clean on both the leading and trailing edges. The measured rise time is approximately 4 milliseconds. Now let's change the sweep rate and look at a PSK signal. The K3 can generate its own digital PSK by using the CW paddle. This screen can be very useful when adjusting a sound card based PSK signal for cleanest waveform. Next we'll look at an SSB voice test using two different sweep rates. Hello, one, two, three, four. 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 We can also look at a two tone test using the LP500's built in test generator. The unit has a number of complex signals available and allows the user to generate his own signals and store them on the internal SD card. The test tone outputs are fed to the line in on the K3 for these tests. Let's use the two-tone test and display it in the waveform mode. You see the classic two-tone pattern with proper modulation. Now let's go to the trapezoidal display. 
In this mode, we're comparing the output of the rig to the output of the amplifier by linking channel 1 and channel 2 couplers. You could also link channel 3 and channel 4. As I adjust the amplifier loading, it's easy to see when it becomes nonlinear. To make it even easier, we've added the proprietary mode, labeled Waveform Trap on the button, or Wave Trap for short. In this mode, we see both the waveform and trapezoid at the same time, as its name implies. There is also a scope mode, which shows the demodulated coupler output. Now let's look at the spectrum mode. This mode displays the power level in dBm of the transmitted signal versus modulation frequency. The vertical range is up to 90 dB, but we typically look at a range of 60 dB for increased vertical resolution. The range button in this mode is in 10 dB increments as opposed to the 6 dB increments in the waveform display. The power level at the zero reference point at the top of the screen is shown in the right side. Plus 65 dBm is the maximum with a standard coupler, which is approximately 3 kilowatts. The sweep button in this mode has six choices. 2.5 kHz, 5 kHz, and 10 kHz with a linear scale, and the same three bandwidths with a log scale. The log scale is generally better for frequency response measurements, but the user can use either type. Once again, the last button selects the test signals. Also in the upper right are the cursor controls. In this case, they measure power in dBm and frequency in Hertz. Now let's look at several common tests. The first is two-tone IMD testing. Here we see the typical two-tone pattern. If we freeze the display, we can use the cursors to measure the difference between the fundamental tones in the third order products. Now let's look at frequency response. We switch the generator to white noise and the scale to 5 kHz log. We can see that the output of my ESSB-enabled K3 is flat to about 4 kHz. If I turn on the transmit equalizer in the K3 and set the corner frequency to 800 Hz, we can see the effect as I adjust it from plus 15 dB to minus 15 dB. Next, we'll look at CW keying bandwidth. This has been a topic of discussion on some of the reflectors lately. Keying parameters of the K3 are not adjustable, but we can verify that it is very clean. In this case, we have the reference set to plus 45 dBm, but we are actually transmitting at about plus 57 dBm, or 500 watts so we need to add 12 dB to our measurement result. As you can see, the signal is down about 58 dB from the reference at 500 Hz. Accounting for the 12 dB brings the signal down to minus 70 dB at 500 Hz. Very close to published tests. Thank you for watching this video. Please watch our website for the latest info regarding final preparations for product release.